Where do you find your inspiration? Where does your muse live? What feeds her? Welcome to episode number seven of Building Wings Studio. I'm Jennifer Russell. So I went out today for a walk to get some fresh air and get a change of scenery. I thought I would bring you along with me. So here we are. This is a, a trail near my home. And I come here quite often in the summer. Uh, the winter's a little chilly, so not as much. But this is definitely one of my favorite places to come for a walk, clear my mind, and find some inspiration. Often you'll find me taking close-up pictures of things. Um, in the summer, I'll come along with my sketchbook and ink and pencil crayons and sometimes watercolors, and I'll just sit and draw for hours. Sometimes I'll just explore. Something that my muse loves to do is just come in. I don't usually bring any music. I just come with my, my camera and my journal, and I just explore. I go through new trails, I go through the old trails, the same ones I've been on, and I explore to find new things. I walk in with curiosity and wonder, and often find myself being awe-inspired. So what do you do to feed your muse? What little things are in your everyday that you take for granted? What things could you sit with and explore more closely? and see something new. Maybe it's the way the light comes through your window at certain times of the day. How can you incorporate those things that you discover into your artwork? Sometimes for me it's um, looking at the patterns. A teacher that I, I once had told me about finding the rhythm in things. So not necessarily seeking out the pattern, but see the rhythm in the leaves and the way that they sway or the way that they're placed on the branch. Look at them closely and see their veins, their message. Do they have anything to tell you? Often these rhythms or patterns make it into my artwork. So my muses are, are often full of nature or at least patterns that I find in nature or curiosities that I find. And I find that the artwork I'm drawn to often has natural themes. And um, not only does being in nature fill me with awe, but just finding a painting or a new piece of art that just gives me a whole new perspective on what it means to be a creator. Sometimes when you're out in the space, or even in your own home, a way to connect more deeply is to stop and check in with your five senses. Find three things in each sense that you can focus on. For example, listen and find three sounds. I hear the wind going through the grass. I hear a squirrel in the background. I can hear people and children laughing in the background. Check in with your sense of touch. Right now I can feel the cold on my nose. I know it's going to be quite red. <laughs> I can feel the warmth in my boots. And the cold air in my lungs. For sight. I can see the blue sky, the green trees, the shades of brown and the water matched with the white on the ice. For smell, I can smell the fresh air, the pine trees, the smell of the wool of my scarf. So check in with your senses wherever you are to ground yourself and write about them, journal about them, and those can be inspiration for pieces later on. My family is here somewhere on this trail, so I'd better go find them. So I'll see you later, and until next time, be inspired. 
I hope you enjoy this little tutorial. This tutorial comes from November 2019's live stream and in it I was playing with watercolors and Ivy Newport's book called Color Flow. That's where the reference of the cardinal and the color palette comes from. So I start by sketching out my cardinal the best I can with Bear and Hoppin in the way there. And I'm using a charcoal pencil so that I can't go back and erase. So I have to commit to the lines I put down and let it be playful. So I roughly sketch in the bird and add in the sticks, the, the branches. So I'm starting with the shadows. I believe the color I'm using is Payne's Gray. And I'm adding in the shadows. I'm looking at my reference and seeing where the darkest parts of the cardinal are. The more water I have on my brush, the lighter the color. And the, more, the less water I have, the more saturated it becomes. And on the bottom left corner of my page is where I'm testing out my colors. So this is really just a study of matching colors in this in this photo. Next I'm looking to match the colors in the background. So I've got a, a green mixed with a bit of the Payne's Grey and a violet. And then I'm mixing them together using wet on wet. So that means I've wet my page with clean water and then I'm dropping the the color into that and letting it blend together. It's also fun to experiment when you're doing a kind of project like this. So I also take some clean water and spatter it on the parts that I just put down and it creates kind of a, a speckled pattern. Now it's time to find the colors for the bird. So I'm using a bright red and I'm mixing it with a bit of uh, the brown just to see what different variations of the color I can get. And there's a little bit of purple and Payne's Gray mixed in. And then I start to add it to the bird. Lightly first, keeping lots of water on my brush, and then where the parts are more vibrant, I'm adding um, less water and keeping it more saturated color. If you're wondering about Payne's Gray, if you don't have that color in your palette, uh, you can mix it with uh, blue and brown and get, a, and get a close color. A dark blue and a dark brown will give you a Payne's Gray. My palette doesn't have an orange in it, so I'm mixing my yellow and the bright red together to create the color for the beak. Then as layers dry, you can go back and forth. So I'll go back between putting layers of red and orange onto the cardinal as well as playing in the background. So now that um, the bird is going to need some time to dry you'll see me hop over into the colors that I used for the background and add some splotches and dots to give it a little more interest. And if you can see it in the picture of the reference there's actually berries there. So the, the splotches are meant to kind of represent the berries.
finish off this lesson, I add some journaling in the background about what the cardinal means to me and what message I think they hold. I often incorporate journaling or writing into my work somewhere as I find it um, a way to connect meaning into it. As an extra challenge, what you could do after it, is dry, uh, after it has dried, you can go in with pencil crayons and add more line work and detail if you choose. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you post on our Facebook group uh, what you make of it. And until next time, be inspired. Thank you.